it's Larry back with a new video, and this time I'm wrapping up the three-part VFX series with episode three. For this last round of tests, we'll first be recapping the Howard A. Anderson Star Trek miniature experiment that I showed last time at the end of the last episode, followed by a reel of additional Star Trek shots from tests done last year, including a motion control shot breakdown from the 1994 Paramount feature Star Trek Generations that involves part of the crash sequence with the Enterprise D saucer section. After that, we'll take a look at a clip from the beginning of my documentary, and I'll show you some breakdowns for the opening sequence, including an initial animatic I created. The Star Wars music has been removed for obvious reasons, but I think you'll get the picture. And last, we'll take a look at a VFX breakdown for something I threw together last week that is directly tied to my documentary as well. And I will pop back in just a few more times to add a little bit of context, but not that much. As I was editing this video, I really felt that the footage played better with just the music behind it rather than me rambling. Besides, most of you get how VFX work, and I have already given detailed descriptions in the last video as to some of the techniques I use in creating the multiple layers and how I put the final shots together. So if you haven't seen parts one or two yet, and you want more details, check them out.
As you can see here, I was having some ghosting issues on the opening frames of the Falcon that required some rotoscoping to clean that up. Now, let's look at the final composite, Sans the Star Wars theme. So here we are with the creation of the faux Fox logo, which I needed to create to replace the actual 20th Century Fox logo in my Star Wars documentary. And I thought it was pretty clever what we came up with because from concept to finished product, it took us only a, less than 48 hours to put this together. And basically what you're seeing here is a board that I stacked up on a bunch of crates on top of a speaker. And that was just so that I could get it elevated as high as I could so I could actually get the camera in an up position looking up at it like you would on the 20th Century Fox logo. And I used three film canisters, like I said, wedged a film reel with obviously no film back in there and set up the green screen in front of the lights. Now I did have to use some boards to bounce light back up onto the bottom of the green screen to get a more even light. And as you can see here, this is the master shot element that is going to be used in the logo. Now in the final, I did recrop and resize this slightly, but this is the original shot. Now to do the light beams, took the same board, lowered it all the way down to just the height of the speaker, folded the green screen over top the board, and then we put a nail in as an anchor. And what this nail is, is gonna allow us to use a little contraption that I put together to animate the light beams for the 20th Century Fox logo. And here it is, what I like to call the shish kebab animation rig. What this is, is three shish kebab skewers, some cardboard, super glue, piece of a broken hanger, some blue paint, and some masking tape. And as you can see here, my buddy is clipping on the part of the broken hanger to the nail and animating our shish kebab rig. And this is how we created the light beams. And so now, I'll break it down, show it to you step by step. Hope you guys enjoy.
And so that wraps up our video, everybody. Thanks for watching. What I'm showing you here is a model kit that I'm working on, and I'm currently putting internal lighting into it, I'm rigging that up. And it is the Batwing from the 1989 Batman movie. And what all of the tests I've shown you in these past three episodes have been leading up to is us actually building and filming our own miniatures and then being able to take that all the way through all of the compositing stages to create our own miniature shots. And I am going to take a matte painting from Batman 89. I've already started doing some significant reworking to it. And we're going to use that as our background plate. So when that gets finished, I'll be sure to show you guys. So as always, again, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Everybody take care and have a good one.